that'll be good. All right, well, I am super excited. So we're gonna be talking about the four things that matter on Instagram. If I can get that thing off the screen, there we go. The four things that matter on Instagram right now in 2023. Things are always changing. We know that it's not changing in terms of the algorithm as much as you may think, but things are always evolving. So we're going to talk about the four things that matter right now to impact your strategy for your brand on Instagram. As uh, as we were just saying, there's a little bit about me here on the screen. I pretty much live, eat, sleep, breathe all things Instagram. When Instagram rolls up an update, I'm like, oh, there goes my day. Uh, so this is what I do. I learn and, and figure out what's going on with all the different Instagram news, features, updates, all that sort of stuff, and bring it to you in a way that makes it make sense. A lot of times they'll come out and say, here's what this does. And we're like, what does that mean? How does it actually impact us? What is the result of this going to be to your direct message strategy, to your content strategy, to your lead generation strategy? And that's what I do. I break it all down. I figure out what it actually means. And I bring you that information. So I have been doing this for a very long time. It is what I love to do, but it also means I hear all of your challenges and questions. I hear what people are saying when they're like, Jen, things have changed, or is the algorithm doing this? Or did I get blocked in some way with this? Or why is this happening? I hear the things that you're saying. And so you're probably all saying recently, what's happened to Instagram? It is definitely different today than it was six months ago, than it was a year ago, and definitely different than it was three years ago, pre-pandemic. So what's actually happened? Well, first of all, engagement is down for everyone. Okay, you are not alone in this. This is one of the biggest challenges. And if your boss is giving you a hard time, if you're trying to explain to you know, your clients, if you're trying to say, this is, I can't, I'm trying, I'm doing what I can, but I just, I can't get the engagement up. It's not your fault. You're not doing anything wrong. This is something that has been happening across the board. Reach and engagement is down, but why? Well, we've had a significant change over the last three years. Pre-pandemic, we all pretty much had a good status quo. You knew if you posted, whether it was a feed post or a video or a story or whatever it was, you pretty much knew how it was going to perform. You could predict. You were like, if I do this, it's going to get this many likes. If I do this, it's going to get this many comments or this many shares. You knew what your content was going to do. But we had consumer behavior and brand behavior evolve post-pandemic. So the way I usually try to explain this is we had a status quo pre-pandemic, right? We had this much content being cre created and we had this much content being consumed. We had a status quo. What happened during the pandemic was consumer behavior went up. People were at home, right? So people were on their phones. They were on Instagram. They were consuming that content to a much higher level. Equally, brands turned around and said, well, that's the only way we can reach our customers because they're not coming in our stores. And people that weren't doing social media started actively doing it. So we had a huge increase in creation of content, but it was fine. Consumer consumption was up. But what happened over the last year, year and a half was the consumption went back down. So our, our behavior as consumers was slowed. We went back to work. We went back to school. We went back to socializing and routines and being busy. And so we're not on our phones as much, but the creators, the brands are like, no, we're still creating content. We still want to reach our audience. We're still up here creating as much content as we were. And now we have this new disparity. It's not right. It's not wrong. It is the reality. There is a new baseline. So we can't look at metrics from three years ago. Average engagement on Instagram pre-pandemic was about two and a half percent. Average engagement today on Instagram is 0.09%. It's just shy of 1% average engagement. That's across the board. We've seen a third of the engagement rate over the last three years. So it's not just you. It just means we have to recalibrate what we look at for expectations. We're also seeing the reality of just platform saturation, right? So beyond just the, the disparity now in consumer and creation behaviors, more people are on Instagram every day. We have over 2 billion monthly active users. People are not 
on the platform every single day. Some people are on the platform 20 times a day, but there are more people. And the more people that are there, the more that they are following other brands. And then that's your content competing for exposure, whether it's in explore, whether it's in search, whether it's in the feed of people you follow, you're competing with more for that exposure. It's saturation that's inevitable over time. It's going to cause a difference. And the third thing is that reels have significantly changed how content appears on Instagram and how consumers behave on the platform. So you've got people who used to just scroll through the feed, super consistent, right? Scroll through the feed, them kind of out of the stories component, people would go through stories, but now you've got reels. When you get into reels, you're in a whole separate tab, which means if someone sees your reels post and goes to reels, they're not going through the rest of the feed. They're now stuck in reels. So if you, someone else sees somebody else's reel and goes into that, and if yours was the next post in the feed and they never returned the feed, they didn't see your post. So there's this change in behavior. And that doesn't mean that reels are the end all be all. We're gonna talk more about reels, don't you worry. <laughs> but there are things that we wanna make sure that we're still doing with our stories and our feed posts to make sure that we're capitalizing on these opportunities, but realizing that they do reach differently. They are going to have a different interaction in some ways because some people just aren't going to see them the way that they used to. None of these things are bad things. It is just reality. And if we can adapt our strategy, if we can create the right content to stand out, then we can actually use these things to our advantage. Because remember, the average engagement on Instagram right now is just shy of 1%. So if your competitors are all in that average range, but you can do something to put yourself in that double digit, you're getting 10, 15% engagement, you're getting much higher reach, that's giving you a chance to stand out against your competition and that's an advantage for you. So those are some things I wanna talk about today to make sure that we're setting you guys up for success. So that being said, what matters today, right now on Instagram? What are the things you need to be focusing on? Reels, yes, we're gonna talk about reels. Carousel posts, these are kind of like a little secret sauce that most people don't think about, but we're gonna talk about how to use those strategically. Then we've got direct messages and we're gonna talk about why this is so important and how you can use them effectively to really transform your business on Instagram. And then we're gonna talk about optimizing for search. You might notice I did not mention hashtags. We still need them. I'm gonna talk about them briefly at the very end of the session today but optimizing search ties in with the hashtags. It's a little bit different than it used to be now as Instagram puts more and more emphasis on that search. So we'll talk more about that. All right, we're diving right in. Who's ready? We're gonna talk Reels strategy. So when it comes to what you're doing through your Reels, what you need to be focusing on, how we're gonna make them work better for you. Reels, 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 yes. This is what everybody wants to know more about. How can you use them? Well, you are going to reach more new people with Reels. I want you to keep that in mind, reaching more new people. Reels are really, really good for top, top, top of funnel for awareness. These are gonna be the things that are more likely to show up randomly. They're not random, it's algorithmically sorted, but essentially outside of your normal scope of audience. They are the content that's most likely to reach new people. So if you're looking to grow your audience, you will need to invest in a real strategy. Does not mean all in, but it means using them strategically and consistently. We're gonna use these less for conversions. Most brands find reels horrible for conversions. They are great for awareness. They are great for top of funnel. They are great for education. But when people are in the Reels feed and they're watching and they're going to watch a few seconds of your video and decide whether or not to stay, and then they're going to scroll on to the next. If you're trying to do conversions, if you're making people leave that feed and now they have to navigate to your profile and go do something, that's a really big ask. And most people, when they're in a Reels mentality of kind of, you know, the doomsday scrolling, they're just there because they just want to be tuned out. They just want to watch entertaining videos. They just want to find some valuable information but they're not prepared to take action. So we'll talk a little bit more about that, but ideally we don't wanna be using reels for heavy calls to action. We wanna use these for the top of funnel and then we're gonna use stories and feed post to actually drive the conversions with your existing audience. It's also super important that you focus 
on what your target audience wants. If they want short videos, you're going to give them short videos. Instagram is finally giving us more insights. Oh, we still need more, but they're giving us more insights on video performance. I really would like some video retention details, but they're slowly giving us a little bit more and we need to know and if, you, if you're getting the new metrics, which are being rolled out, there, it's actually telling you average watch time. It's not telling you a graph or anything actually valuable, but they're at least telling you average watch time. So if you have an 82 second video and average watch time is six seconds, people are not watching that whole video. What does that tell you? If you're doing an 82 second video and average watch time is 45 seconds, people are watching that video. So you want to look and see what does your audience want in terms of the length, in terms of the content? Are you getting more engagement, more shares, more likes, comments, responses, whatever it is, when you do your meet the team post versus the product post? Do you do it when, you know, someone needs to bring the dog to work day post? What is it that they're engaging with? Their behavior, their engagement is telling you what matters, what they want, and we need to focus on giving them more of what they want. Figure out how to incorporate what you want to give them into the type of content that they're asking for more of. All right, so some things to keep in mind when you are creating your reels. Short reels are ideal for that top of funnel. So we're talking under 15 seconds. If you want to reach new audiences, it's got to be under 15 seconds. Most reels that will appear in things like Explore or that are shown to new audiences are going to be those under 15 seconds. Because somebody who does not know you is not going to give you 90 seconds of attention. That's just not going to happen unless it is some sort of like cosmically amazing piece of content. On average, they're going to give short reels for those search and new audiences. So those short ones under 15 seconds, you're crafting those strategically just for awareness. No calls to action, no pushing a sale, nothing like that. It is just to be, bring people aware a little bit about your brand, who you are, what you do, what's in it for them, those sorts of things. Your longer reels, reels that are over 30 seconds are ideal for your existing audience. This is providing that longer form, I know 90 seconds, long form content, but this is your chance to give them those resources, the education, the tips, the tutorials, the, the larger meet the teens. These are your chance to actually create valuable content, value add content for your existing audience. And these are where you can start to mix in those calls to action, but again, be very strategic with them. As I mentioned, most brands find conversions from reels extremely low. So do not set a high precedent of expectation that reels are going to convert. Keep that for your stories and your feed post. Use the reels for the exposure. You also have a very limited time, literally less than a second to attract your viewers. If you are not grabbing their attention in that very first frame, bye Felicia, they're gonna keep scrolling. So you wanna make sure that you're coming in hot. You gotta come in with energy. You gotta come in with that topic, with a good hook, with good visuals. You're not gonna do some fade to black and a nice slow intro of, hi, my name is Jen Herman with Jen's Trends. They're not sticking around past the words Jen Herman. So we wanna make sure that you're coming in hot with that topic or hook to get them excited to want to watch the rest of the video. Many reels get significantly more engagement than I'm going to say normal videos. <laughs> They're all reels, so it's kind of hard to, to phrase it that way. But you can upload a video that is longer than 90 seconds. Um, it can be up to 10 minutes on mobile. And when you upload that, it's still considered a reel but those don't get the same type of exposure and they don't typically get the same type of engagement. Those will typically get low reach and low engagement. Now, if your audience is used to you creating videos, you may be going, no, Jen, we get great engagement and reach on our longer videos. And that's great. But in general, the an actual reel, the under 90 second uploaded as a reel is going to get significantly more engagement and reach than a longer video that it's uploaded to the platform. So some things to keep in mind when you're creating the reels, when you're going through the actual creation process and upload, you want to keep the caption super short. You can see on the screenshot on the screen here, you've got, um, they've got a couple of emojis and happy weekend. You literally see that one line of text. That's it. If you've watched reels, you know this. You can tap on that dot, 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 
and expand the caption. If you've got your hashtags and everything there, it'll populate on there. But no one watches or no one reads those captions. If you're watching a video and you try to tap on that and now you have all this white text over a moving background, it is incredibly hard to read. Now, of course, people turn around and they're like, but Jen, if it shows up in the feed, they see the caption. Technically, yes, but they still only see two lines of text and then they have to click the dot, dot, dot more to read the actual caption. And most of the time, they're just gonna watch the video. So we wanna make sure that we're not overusing and, and wasting time on filling in a heavy caption on your reels. Keep that caption to literally one line, make it basically the title, the topic, something of, of interest related to that video, and that's all you need. You're gonna use the same hashtag strategy as your feed post. If you're not familiar with my hashtag strategy, you can either go to my website, jenstrends.com or my YouTube channel, which is YouTube forward slash jens underscore trends, J-E-N-N-S, it's John with two N's, but I have my hashtag strategy pretty much everywhere. And you can actually walk through that and it will show you all of the things you need to know about the hashtag strategy. That's what you wanna use in here. It's gonna help you with search ranking um, and algorithmic references. When it comes to your reels, you do not need to dance. Trust me, no one wants to see this dance. And I don't. <laughs> That's okay. It doesn't have to be dancing. It doesn't have to be lip syncing. It doesn't have to be trending audio. You can have high quality, high performing reels without those components. You need to figure out what works for you and your brand. You're going to create that educational content. Yes, we want entertainment content as well. We need that fluff content. It does help because when we have good entertainment content, people stay interactive with us. And then that way they're more likely to see our higher or our value request, right? So when we're saying, hey, we wanna give you this free download. And they're like, great, I want that. But they're not likely to see that request for the free download if they're not interacting with your higher level entertainment quote fluff type content. So we still want the entertainment content but you can absolutely create educational content. If your brand is in the B2B space, you can still use Reels. They absolutely work. We just need to get creative with your audience. You wanna get right to the point in the first frame, like I was just saying, you're gonna come in. I'm not gonna give a whole introduction as to who I am. If you are a bank, you're not gonna say, hi, I'm so-and-so and I'm with the you know, client experience team. That doesn't matter. Instead, you wanna come right in and I would be like, here's the four things you need to know on Instagram right now. And I'm gonna jump into the topic. You don't need to know who I am in a short reel. If they wanna know more, they can go to my profile and find out who I am. I always, always, always recommend adding a title with a text box, especially in that first frame. When you go into your reels, add a text box, make that last for the first two or three seconds. So again, when I'm coming in and saying, here's the four things you need to know about Instagram right now, I've also got a text box right here that says the four things you need to know about Instagram right now, because even in the time that it takes me to say, here are the four things, you may have swiped. Four things about what? You never got to the about Instagram. But if I have a text box, the moment that video starts playing, you can see that topic and you can read it faster than I can say it. You go, oh, I want to watch this video. So that will help you with your retention. It will help you with your views overall, and it will help you with your engagement as well. You also want to create a custom cover image. This is super important for views. When someone follows you in your feed, they're going to see the video. They're never going to see that custom cover photo. But if somebody just found you and somebody comes over and looks at your profile and they go to your reels tab, all they see are a bunch of thumbnails. If there's no custom cover photo that has the title and the value of that video to them, they're not going to watch them. If you are appearing in searches, same thing. People see your custom cover photo. They go, oh, that's a video about how to fix my toilet. That's what I need to know more about. But if they just see some person in a video, they have no context of what that video is about. Likewise, if I see the title of the video and I know that's not for me, I'm not going to click on it and filter in a bunch of unwanted audience into those views. So by putting the custom cover photo, you're attracting more of the right audience into your videos. They're more likely to watch longer because they know it's a relevant topic to them. And if someone goes to your Reels tab, it makes it look all organized. They can come to you and go, 
oh, okay, well, I really specifically want to know about hashtags, or I really specifically want to know about Instagram engagement. They don't have to wonder and go through three or four videos that are irrelevant to the topics that they're looking for. They can get right to the topics that matter most to them, more likely to drive that conversion, that follow, that contact. All right, so with that, I want to share this with you guys. If you want to grab your cameras and do a quick uh, photo of what we have, the QR code on the screen here, this is a free download that I'm offering. It will give you 12 Reels ideas that any industry can use. It's not specific to any one industry. It is a double opt-in. I know GDPR and all that fun stuff that we all know about. So you're going to have to say yes, and then you're going to get an email and have to say yes again to get your download. But that's going to give you 12, uh, 12 Reels ideas that any industry can use with examples and reasons why they work. So feel free to grab that, help yourself get started with those Instagram reels. If you're not actively using them right now, that's gonna give you a great starting point as you really start to test out and see what works with your audience. All right, so let's move on to carousel posts because like I mentioned, this is kind of a secret sauce for success. Yes, hashtags are still great and I still love those, uh, but carousels have kind of become the new secret sauce uh, on Instagram these days. So when you use a carousel, this is a post that has up, it has two up to 10 posts in the sequence, right? So you can swipe across the screen. You can see like on this one, it's got the little dots under the image. So you can actually see how many are upcoming or whatever, but that tells you it's a carousel. Here's why these are important. It gives you double the chance for exposure. So if I post a carousel and I've got two photos or eight photos or whatever it is, the first time you log into Instagram and Instagram serves you my content and you're like, meh, and you scroll. The next time you come in, Instagram's going to be like, oh, but wait, there's more. And they're going to show you the second image in the suitcase. It only happens a second time. If you have five, it doesn't do this five times. It only does it two times. But now that second photo is going to be what appears in that carousel feed. So now you're gonna look at it and be like, well, oh, I like that photo or that one resonates with me more or that's something that caught my attention. Or maybe you recognize the, the caption underneath and you're like, did I already see this? Just that pause, that brief second stop in the scroll is a positive ranking algorithmically. That alone, we have no metric on, tells Instagram that you care about me and you're more likely to see my content the next time you log in. So using those carousels, even if they don't actually swipe and they just pause long enough, that's a positive ranking algorithmically. If they do now start swiping through your carousel, that's a positive ranking algorithmically. If they click dot, dot, dot more, that's a positive ranking algorithmically. So that carousel gives you that second chance to get in front of them and have a positive ranking. But it's also more likely that they're gonna engage with a like, a comment, a share if they see it a second time. So because of this, we do not want to use the same image twice, all right? We're not going to take, here's the image and, oh, look, we made it a carousel and put the same image again, because if they didn't like it the first time, it's not going to get their attention the second time. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll make the first image where it is like just an image of me. And the second image is a similar image, but I put text on the image. So now I've got a more information. So if they don't just look at the first one, by the second time, there's something that says what this post is about, a value add, a tip or you know update news, something like that, that they're like, oh, I want to know more about that. So now they're stopping to read the text and they're going to go read the caption. So that's an option. Or you'll see I do a lot of carousels on my profile where I do tips and tutorials. So the first slide is the title and you swipe through and each slide in the carousel is another step in that tip or that tutorial or that information. So those are great because that keeps people swiping. Those are highly shareable. People are more likely to share those because they're a resource, they're a value add. So these are all ways that you can use carousels advantageously not just to get the additional exposure, but to actually get more engagement and more performance on your post. Now, we're not going to overuse these. You're not gonna be like, well, Jen said carousels are double the exposure. Everything's a carousel. No, because it can oversaturate your audience. It can be too much content. People don't always want to have to scroll to see your content. So we wanna mix these into the feed strategically when you want to provide that added value, when you have that heavy call to action, you might want to consider doing a carousel. When you're promoting that new blog post, when you're promoting your new video, when you've got a new product launch, those sorts of things where you really can take advantage of that double exposure where there's more likely they're going to read the caption and see that call to action, 
it's times like that where we want to get strategic and how we're going to incorporate our carousels, not all the time. All right, so let's talk a little bit about direct messages. So Instagram has been all in on DMs. And this goes back to when Meta says jump, we ask how high. So if you remember back in the day, it seems like forever ago, when Facebook was like, hey, Facebook groups are the place to be. And we were like, we all started Facebook groups, right? Because if you didn't have a Facebook group, you weren't going to get reach. Pages were seriously deprecated and Facebook groups was what they were giving exposure to. So for a while, Instagram was like, reels are where you're supposed to be. And it was like, reels are what we're going to do. Well, now direct messages are where you need to be. Instagram is all in on these. They want us in direct messages. Now they keep telling us this is the natural evolution. This is where the behavior is going. This is what people are doing. They're moving from uh, public private or public conversations into more private conversations. But they're, and so they're doing these things to facilitate that change in user behavior, but they're telling us to use our DMs. So we're gonna do it. And here's some things that you wanna keep in mind. They are adding more and more features. So where it's been one of those things where like, okay, here's just a long list of DMs and I'm just, what am I supposed to do? They're adding more and more functionality, whether it's for, you know, business tools, tools in general within DMs, they are trying to make it more functional. We even have things obviously now, like we've got the broadcast channels, which is kind of a DM. It goes into your DMs, um, but it's still, it's a one to many. Like I have my broadcast channel. You can't engage with me. You can't respond to the messages that I put out there. But when I comment or when I put something in the channel, it goes into your DMs. So there's all these other ways that we're getting content into that folder. Also, if you and I have a direct message conversation, if you reply to my story and it opens up a dialogue and we have a DM going on, Instagram looks at that as a personal interaction. This is relatively new in the priority ranking. This has an algorithmic preference. It's always been this way, but Instagram is making this a higher priority as of this year, as of recently. So if you and I have had a direct message conversation, you are more likely to see my content because Instagram says, well, you guys have talked. You guys have a personal relationship. I am assuming that you want to see Jen Herman's content. So we're going to put it higher in your feed. That gives algorithmic preference. And there is the strategic reason, not just for the relationships, not just for the ability to connect with your audience, which is all the good reasons to use DMs. But now we have a strategic reason to want to move things into the direct messages because it's going to help you perform better with your audience on Instagram. So things to do with your direct messages to make them work. You're gonna to wanna to use calls to action that drive direct messages. This has become my new favorite thing, ladies and gentlemen. I am obsessed with this strategy. Forever, we have had the link in bio, right? You want more? Click the link in bio. That still works, I still use it. But I've gotten very strategic with pushing to direct messages. So when I have something to offer, let's say it's, to subscribe for a webinar like this. Instead of saying, click the link in my bio, I'm gonna say, comment link below and I'll send you the link. So what they do is in that post, they comment link. I don't even have to go to their profile. When you're looking at your notifications, there's an option to reply with a message. So I can like their post, I can reply to the comment or I can message them. And when I message them, it opens up the direct message thread and I can say, thanks for your interest in the webinar. Here's the link to sign up. Look forward to seeing you there. You can copy and paste this. You can make this a little auto that you just dump it in there as a canned response. There's lots of ways you can do this, you know, relatively efficiently. But A, that puts a bunch of engagement on your post because now you have a whole bunch of comments on your post, right? So algorithmically, oh, yay, high performing post. But it's moving all of these people into a direct message positive algorithmically, and it's a way to individually give them the link, give them the resource, rather than saying, go to my link in bio, and you don't know how many people went there. I mean, yeah, you kind of get like a click rate and everything, but this actually tells you 22 people reached out to me to get that link. You have a metric that you can actually look at. Other things you can do is say things like, send us a DM and we'll send you the info. So instead of doing the comment link below, ask them 
to send you a DM. Say you go send me a DM, request it, and we'll give you all that info. If people want it, they will do it. This is a high value ask, but if it's a high value reward, they're going to do it. Another thing is in stories, obviously, if they reply to the story, it opens up a DM. So when you've got your story content, do the reply to the story and we'll give you the coupon code or we'll give you the link or whatever it is. Encourage people to use that reply feature in the story function to open up those DMs. Now, once you're getting those direct messages, please, please, please remember that this is customer service, okay? We, do, we can't just be like, send me a DM and then we don't talk to them for 18 days. You're going to have to be responsive. If they ask questions, answer their questions, engage in the dialogue. If they're asking for requested information, they want that link, give them the link. They came to you and said, I want the link for that webinar. Don't full, like, don't go on with a, like a bunch of other information. Just be like, here's the link. You want to follow up separately, follow up separately, but give them what they requested. Then use that opportunity to build the relationships and conversations. This is where if someone's replying to your stories and maybe it's a more personal thing. Like I do a lot of stories where I showcase my daughter and people will reply. Now we're having a conversation, a dialogue unrelated to Instagram. We're having a relationship related to moms, related to parents, related to personal life, related to San Diego or the place that I'm visiting, restaurants that I'm meeting at, those sorts of things. So build those relationships and the conversations. Don't be afraid to actually engage in dialogue. And ideally, if possible, personalize your responses as much as possible. Use their name. Say, thanks, Lisa. I'm so glad you appreciated that. Or absolutely, John, here's that link. When you can personalize it, it levels up your brand to a completely different layer than where your competitors are at. And also use audio or video. If I voice message you a response, if you ask me a question and I shoot you a quick, you know, 18, 22 second response on, on a voice message or even a video, you know that was custom responded for you. That wasn't a canned message. You're hearing my voice. You know it's me and not my team that's responding to you. That builds loyalty, trust, and all these other components related to relationship building, but it all builds your brand all the way around. So wherever you can, use the audio and video components and make sure you're personalizing. All right, so the last thing we're gonna talk about in terms of what you need to know right now in 2023 for Instagram is optimizing for search, which is a relatively new thing in the grand scheme of Instagram. We've always had to rely on hashtags. You could either search by location, search by hashtag, or basically just look at explore, right? Like those were kind of your search functionalities. Now we actually have essentially SEO. We actually have a capacity for keyword search. Full disclosure, this is not no long tail keyword search. Okay, this is not like fun things to do with my kids while I'm in San Diego. No, ma'am, they're gonna be womp womp. <laughs> You're not gonna get results. You might say kids activities San Diego and get some results. You could do San Diego and get results. Activities San Diego, we're talking short keyword searches, but you want to keep this in mind when you're crafting your content. So when you go into Instagram and you do a search, so in this case, I did a search for kids crafts. Again, two words, simple phrases, and you know, one or two, maybe three words only. Instagram is going to look at three key areas to determine what to put in that search result. It's going to look at your profile description, what you define your brand as on Instagram in your profile description. So if you don't have a good profile description with the keywords you want to be found for, and no, we're not keyword stuffing, I'm gonna explain more, but we wanna make sure that it's relevant to the types of things we want to be found for. Your post captions. If all of your posts tend to be about a similar topic, you're more likely to rank in searches for that. So if all my posts are about Instagram, but I have a post over here about when I go to SeaWorld with my daughter, I'm not likely to rank as high in a search for SeaWorld because although I have a post, it's not in my profile description, it's not in my typical content and typical post captions for it to be a high ranking search result. But it's still gonna look at that individual post caption and say, but this post is about SeaWorld. So maybe we will show it, but we're gonna put it down lower in the search results. And then yes, they are gonna look at your hashtags. Hashtags are still important. You still need to use them because they absolutely help on the back end with the artificial intelligence, the AI for search categorization. You wanna keep your hashtags in the caption. Hashtags in the comment 
do not work for search optimization. They will not look at hashtags and comments. So for this purpose, we now want to think about putting our hashtags in the caption in order to make sure that they're showing up for search. Total little side note on that, always make sure you're using camel case if you leave your hashtags in the caption, that's where you capitalize the first letter of each word in the hashtag. That makes it more accessible for people who rely on things like screen readers. If you're using all lowercase hashtags, it's very, very hard on screen readers and you're going to annoy your audience. So if you do camel case where you capitalize the first letter of each hashtag, it makes it significantly easier on those users. All right, so here's what we're looking at. Here's what Instagram is looking for. When you put in a search, here's what it's looking at. So again, I searched kids crafts. So this post where you can see the caption um, in the middle of the screen is the, in, from the, the profile over here on the right-hand side, it's that rightmost image where she was doing some of that, uh, the hand stitching. So here's what Instagram is looking at. So in the caption of that post, she says, little hands, handcraft, my kids, handmade gift, plus the context of all of these things. But there are clear words scattered throughout this very good, very descriptive caption that tell Instagram that this post has to do with crafts and kids. The caption's already telling them that. Then we go down into the post hashtags exclusively for that post. And she's got all these different things like crafts for kids, kids crafts, kids Christmas crafts. There's a lot of hashtags in there that specifically pull from crafts and kids. So we're going, we're batting two for two. We're good to go. Now you go look at her profile. In there, she's got that she is a mama. The algorithm is smart enough to know that that means there's kids involved. And she has the word crafts. So this is three for three. She's hit all three key areas for Instagram to say, yes, this is something that Jen is looking for when she searched for kids crafts. And that's why this post was the top option when I did this search. So how can you do this? We want to make sure that you're optimizing for the keywords people are searching for, not what you want to be found for. You're not going to use hashtag car insurance because people aren't going to Instagram to look for car insurance, but they're going to be looking for things related to, you know, tips to maintain a car, um, you know, tips on buying a car. Maybe they're going to be looking for things related to their dream car or brands or all the, you know, car detailing or, you know, whether it's like custom uh, upgrades and things on cars. There's all these different things that people are looking for that still need car insurance, right? So we wanna make sure that we're putting the right things. You, Yes, if you were to sell car insurance, you could say that you're a car insurance broker in your caption or in your profile, absolutely. But make sure that you're mixing in these other terminologies that are related to what your audience is looking for. If they're gonna to go to Instagram and type in a search, they're not gonna search for car insurance. What are they looking for? How can you incorporate that into your content strategy and make sure that you're putting the right hashtags and keywords throughout your content organically in a way that's going to help you rank better in search? All right, what else do you need to think about? What else do you need to keep in mind in 2023? Like I just said, hashtags still matter. Use them. <laughs> It is not quite the use it or lose it that it used to be pre-organic search on the platform, but you still need to use them. Use up to 30, go nuts. Use as many relevant hashtags upwards of that 30. There is no, there's no punishment for using them. There's no penalty for using them. There's no, oh, only use five or you know, don't reuse them. Use 30, use 28, 22, as many as you want. Use the same ones on every single post, it's okay. Fun fact, do not go back and retroactively change your old hashtags. Don't do it. That looks like bulk activity. Instagram starts to freak out. Just use the right strategy going forward. We didn't talk much about stories today uh, because again, we only have like two more minutes until I want to take Q&A. So I had to be selective in the four things that matter most. Stories still matter, absolutely. Stories are actually probably one of the most uh, highest converting content for most brands when it comes to Instagram. So you absolutely wanna make sure that you have a strong stories strategy and use interactive stickers. When you put on a poll, quiz, question, countdown, slider, any of those interactive stickers, those drive engagement. It's not passively consuming your story, it's 
actively engaging with your story. And that active engagement puts your story higher in their feeds. It keeps you higher, more likely to be seen. So where possible, use those interactive stickers to drive that engagement, to drive those DM responses, to drive that participation and loyalty development. And finally, please have fun. <laughs> I love Instagram. I get excited about them. I hope that you're getting a little bit more excited about it after this, this session today. But if you're not having fun, neither is your audience. People are not on Instagram the same way that they are on, you know, LinkedIn or even Twitter or Clubhouse. And yes, those platforms, people want to be entertained, but they go there for a different reason. Most people on Instagram are looking for a fun. They're looking for a release. They're looking for entertainment. Doesn't mean you can't give them educational content. I thrive on educational content on Instagram, but we make it fun. How can you bring in the fun factor? Whether it's through funny captions, whether it's through interactive participation, whether it's through jokes, behind the scenes, blooper reels, what can you do to keep it fun? Because when you're having fun, your audience is having fun. And if we're having fun, they're more likely to give you their money. And that's ultimately what we want from all of this. So I want to thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you learned some fun new things. As a reminder, if you have any questions from what we, we've talked about, if you have any questions unrelated to what we've talked about, if you're like, Jen, you didn't talk about this, go dump that in the Q&A. We've got a good 15 minutes here to answer your questions specifically. In the meantime, while you're dropping those questions in there, feel free to check me out all around the interwebs as Jens, J-E-N-N-S underscore trends. I also have a free Facebook group. If you go to Facebook and search Jens Trends in social media, you'll find that Facebook group. It's a giant plethora of information and resources and other people just like you where you can come hang out ask questions stay on top of most social media news especially the instagram side of things i also have a membership program called profit your profile which you're welcome to check out at profityourprofile.com where we teach all things instagram we have two live trainings every month our training tomorrow in the membership is how to increase your engagement on instagram so that's exclusively for my members and Ultimately, I would love for you to sign up for the newsletter. If you'd already signed up to get that QR code for the 12 Reel strategy, you're already gonna be on the newsletter list, which you're free to opt out of at any point. But if you wanna grab that newsletter that goes out the first Wednesday of every month and it breaks down all the Instagram updates that have happened in the previous month, we average 10 to 12 Instagram updates per month. So we break it all down in a way that makes sense to you so you can stay on top of it. Plus I give you all the other big social media news from around the space. It's a giant resource of information for you in one email. That's about all I send because I only got so many hours in the week, in the month to send emails. So I'm only going to bombard you with one email a month if you sign up for that. All right. So with that, I'm going to stop screen sharing and we will go ahead and take those questions. Oh, and Stephanie's in the green room now too. Hey. Oh, that was fantastic. You know what? Mind blown because I gathered some new information. I hey. always say go to link in bio. Always. Right? I, 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 you know, I was always thinking, why do people want me to comment that <laughs> I want something? <laughs> and I and I do it because I'm like, yes, I want it. So I'm gonna comment anyways, right? but I never actually like put two and two together. And that's a great, that's a great tip. I've never used it and I'm definitely gonna use it. So thank you I for love that. It. <laughs> we'll get right into the question. So we just finished up on hashtags. So just really quick, someone just wanted a clarification. Um, should the hashtags, it just says, should the hashtags be capitalized? Can you clarify if it's the first letter of every word or just the first letter of the first word? first letter of every word. So a screen reader cannot read it if it doesn't look like different words. So if you were to say this is a hashtag, you would capitalize the T in this, the I in is, and the A, and then the H in hashtag. So this is a hashtag. If you don't, a screen reader is going to have to go T-H-I-S-I-S-A-H- each as it has to read each character so for the screen readers is why we want to have the the camel case of every word being capitalized awesome all right let's get right into um this is from the beginning so Antoinette wants to know i'm trying to promote my youtube video um slash channel on social media platforms what is the best way to do that on instagram so i would recommend taking short clips from those videos and turning them into reels 
So you can have little snippets and then be able to say for the full video, click my link in bio to go to my YouTube channel. Um, so you're going to drive traffic that way. You're also going to want to do, you know, do some bloopers, do some funny little snips of like, you know, or like when you do the screen grab and you show that it took like 42 takes to get that cover photo, those sorts of things are great for stories. People love that kind of content. It's super relatable. Um, you're going to want to do a story strategy where you are going to be able to push people again, because you can put links in your stories. So whether it's clips, whether it's just talking about, like literally just grab your camera and be like, Hey, so I just finished filming a brand new video for my YouTube channel where I'm talking about blah, 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 blah. Make sure you go check it out. Here's the link. And then you put the link sticker on there so you can push people that way. But additionally, we want to see you. We're the, not all of your content is going to push over to YouTube, right? Because then they're going to be like, well, why am I following you on Instagram? So we want to make sure that you're putting things in there about who you are, what you do, other aspects of your business, whether it's photos or videos. But we want to have some of those personal type components you know, the motivation behind, you know, hey, I was doing this and that's made me think of a topic for this video. Um, or, you know, do you have a family? Where do you live? What are your hobbies? We're still going to want to mix in some of that personal stuff that makes them to say, yes, I really like this person. I really want to be connected with this person, this brand on Instagram as an individual. And yes, I will still go watch their YouTube videos to get the value add. Perfect. Okay, so the next question, as someone who's not yet committed to Instagram, can you briefly touch on the pros and cons of Instagram versus LinkedIn for business? So without knowing what business you're in, I can't do it too well. <laughs> but so here's the thing. LinkedIn tends to be a more professional platform. So we tend to see more of the B2B over there. Doesn't mean you can't be B2C tends to typically be people who are looking for business related content, news and updates related to their industry, things that are going on, you know, whether it's in their competitive businesses, people that they work with, you know, colleagues that they're wanting to stay connected with, whether they're looking for jobs, any of those sorts of things, right? It tends to be a more professional environment. Instagram tends to be more of the, what are you doing when you're standing in the checkout line? What are you doing when you're waiting for your kids to fall asleep? You know, what are you doing on the commute on the way home? It's a bit more of an entertainment platform. So this is something that is, it, it's not pro or con, it's just different between the two, right? Instagram's gonna be a bit more entertainment based, LinkedIn's gonna be a little more professional based. Now, that being said, Instagram is where people tend to go if they are in the generally kind of like the 30 to 45 demographic. That's the platform of choice. There's obviously exceptions. Plenty of people are on TikTok. Plenty of people are on Facebook. Plenty of people are on LinkedIn. Instagram tends to be that, like I said, about 30 to 45 typical age range. So if that's your target audience, that's where they're hanging out. And we want to go where our audience is. That's one of the big advantages. Also on Instagram, you're going to have more options for that visual connection and people want visual connections. Even if it's not video, like I'm not a video consumer. I don't like videos. I don't like reels. I tell everybody I don't like reels, but I do them, but I like visuals, right? I can scroll through and I can photos. I can scroll through your carousel. I can go through people's stories and I can see what's going on really quickly. LinkedIn, you got to read right? So if you're looking for people that what you want to connect with really quickly with a visual component to build that emotional connection, that relationship, and that loyalty through a visual platform, Instagram is going to be a much better platform for you than something like LinkedIn. And I could go on for like an hour on this, but that's the short version. <laughs> awesome. This is kind of similar. Um, this is from Alex. I help business owners sell businesses. Are business owners really engaged on Instagram or should I look at other platforms? What are some ideas for content? So definitely that's a situation where LinkedIn is going to be, you know, obviously a, a preferred platform, even something like Twitter, Facebook could still be a very valuable place, but people are still on Instagram, right? So it's a difference of you want to make your brand known. I would focus on it as being the educator. I would do a ton of educational content related to, you know, frequently asked questions as to, what does it take to sell a business? What does it take to buy a business? What goes into it? Like, you know, do you need a mortgage broker to buy a business or do you just like come up with the money and just like fork it over in a check? Like, what does that look like? Cause maybe I didn't know that I, I could buy a business and by, I can learn from you that, oh, this is an option or, oh, you know, I've got this business. I, you know, I walk dogs and, you know, is there any value in selling it? I don't know, but I can learn from you and be like, oh, look at that. Because the business owners 100% 
are on Instagram. They may not be there thinking about what it is you offer, but if you're creating the right educational content, and if you're creating that, those high level reels to reach more people around specific topics, if you specifically work with a certain type of business, like for example, let's use the dog walking example, you could create a bunch of content related to dog walking businesses. And if I'm a dog walker, that's my business. I'm seeing dog walking content, but now I'm going to find your content related to selling or buying dog walking businesses. How maybe I'm going to merge and acquire another business. I want to know more. So I would look at it from that perspective of making yourself the educational awareness, but making sure you're providing additional value add in the industries of which you serve. All right. So the next one is from Abigail. So I'm going to read this one. It's a little long. Um, for posting carousels or posts, do you recommend a certain style for the page, like aesthetically to attract people uh, to want to follow and stay following and engage with the page? I am running a therapist page and trying to figure out aesthetics for how to make it appealing for both potential clients checking us out and for future or and for current clients. So typically, Instagram is not a text heavy visual. So we do not want the first frame in your carousel to be all of this text, right? We want a couple few words where it's like, you know, here's how to blank or five ways to blank, whatever it is. We just want simple words. And yes, aesthetically, we absolutely want to create something. Go into something like Canva or Easel and create a template, put your brand colors in there and create something. You can see a couple examples of ones that I use on my um, Instagram if you want a little bit of inspiration. But when you go into Canva, you can literally pick these things and it's like, okay, great. Like go in and say you want an Instagram carousel and it will literally give you already pre-formatted options. You just change out the colors to your brand colors. So you put in, you know, your, your greens and your blues or whatever is your color palette and boom, you've got a template, save it and you're good to go. And then you can just go in and change the text every time. So I use the same cover photo. I just change the text and it creates consistency, it creates brand awareness that now when people see that frame with that text, they're like, oh, Jen's got something to say because it starts to build the familiarity in the way that it's crafted by being consistent. Now I use two or three different types of versions on mine. You could do the same thing, pick a couple, but start with that. Definitely look at something um, from a, a visually aesthetically appealing, consistent with your brand colors. And if you're, you know, you're a therapist, you might want something that's light and airy and maybe has a floral component or has something that's got, you know, a wave you, or maybe you want to be like, I really want modern and bold and, and firm, whatever it is, you're going to pick what works to represent your brand. And that's going to connect most with your audience. All right. So the next one is from Julia. Um, she says, I struggle coming up with captions. Are there resources that could help, um, help become more creative in that realm? So for the sake of argument, I'm gonna throw it out there, chat GPT. <laughs> um, I'm a, an ambassador for Mag AI, which is built off of a multitude of platforms. Um, so it uses chat GPT as well as Claude. Um, but that's honestly like, if you can put in a prompt that says, you know, write me a caption for, and you're like giving it the, the context of what you want, that's honestly the, the best, easiest, most convenient creative tool right now. I would go look for some inspiration. So one of my, two of my favorite accounts, one is the TSA. I freaking love the TSA on Instagram. Yes, the people that make you take your shoes off at the airport. They're amazing on Instagram. It's dad jokes and yet super informational. Also the National Park Service is very similar. Both of these have one guy that runs each of their accounts. That's a different guy, but National Park Service is another one that has really fun, witty comments. Doesn't mean you have to go that route, but go look for inspiration from other people. What are the types of captions that resonate with you? Is it when there is a level of humor? Is it when, you know, there's a certain banter or a certain type of um, like slang? Like I always use gonna, G-O-N-N-A, -N -N -A, instead of going to, like, that's just how I talk. So I always mix that in. And then you can also help that if you're using with like something like chat GPT with your prompts and say, I want it written in a witty banter or like do something where you're giving it the additional prompting to put it in a vibe and style that you like, that you know it's gonna resonate with your audience, but that also reflects your brand. So if you are like a pencil skirt wearing, straight hair, very professional, very legally speaking person, we don't want our content written like some super laid back surfer type vibe, right? So 
We want to make sure it stays on brand, but look for creative ways from inspiration of other accounts that you see on Instagram that are doing this shameless plug, feel free again to sign up for my newsletter. Um, because in that I always recommend a new Instagram account every month and I explain why I like them. And sometimes it's because I like their captions or it's because I like how they use their calls to action or those things. So sometimes that can be a good uh, spout of creativity and inspiration for you. I won't lie. I use chat GPT for captions. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> when I have like a writer's block, I'm like, oh my God, I'll just go in and I'll just right? like, give me 10 caption. Even if you ask, give me 10 caption ideas. You're just like, oh yeah. my God, that one's a good one. Exactly. All right. <laughs> awesome. So I wanted to end with this question because I thought it was a good question. This is from Cindy. And um, she asked, what advice do you, you give to people starting to use Instagram in their marketing? Great. So first thing I'm going to say is get started. <laughs> Don't wait. <laughs> it's going to evolve. Like you're better off to start than to try to get it perfect. You can go back through years. I've been on Instagram for 10 years. You can see how my brand has evolved. I'm not hiding anything. I'm not changing anything from what is in the past. That's part of who I was. It's where I was at that time. My brand has evolved. You're better off just starting. Don't wait for perfection. That being said, go look for inspiration. Like we were just talking about what kind of vibe do you want? What are other people in your industry doing? What kinds of things are they sharing? Are they, go, are they heavy on reels? Are they heavy on, on carousel posts or feed posts? What kinds of stories are they doing? What are they showcasing in your industry? Are they doing more education? Are they doing more um, entertainment? What are other people doing? Get some market research. Then adding on to the market research, get what information you can from your existing audience, your existing clients, your Facebook followers, or your LinkedIn connections, and literally ask. If I was to share content on Instagram, what do you want from me? Ask them. They're going to tell you. They're going to say, oh, I really love when you do these little tutorials. I would love to see those on Instagram. Or I really love when you answer these types of questions. I would love to see that on Instagram. They're going to tell you, even if it's only three or four people that tell you, it's somebody that is an exact target audience for who you're trying to appeal to telling you what they want more of. So do that market research, figure out what that looks like. Then start thinking strategically in terms of how often and what you're going to post. So for the sake of argument, my general golden rule would be to post three to four times a week on the feed. And that includes a reel. Now, if you're getting started, that may seem overwhelming, in which case you may do one feed post this week, one reel next week, one carousel the following week, and then you pick back up feed, read, carousel, or sorry, feed, reel, carousel, feed, reel, carousel. Put it in some sort of consistency because it's going to take you six to eight weeks to determine a trend. You're not going to come out and be like, well, everyone's saying do reels. So I'm going to do three reels and one feed post, and then I'm going to just leave it for three weeks and come back and try it again. That's not going to work. So you want to figure out a feed reels, carousel and stories, stories as much as possible. But in the feed, if you can alternate that kind of like one of each of those types of posts, whether it's you do one every week. So you're doing three posts a week, whether you do one every week. So every three weeks, you're starting over again, give it six to eight weeks. That's going to tell you what your audience wants. You're going to see my reels are getting a ton of reach. My feed posts are not. My carousels are getting great engagement. My reels are not. It's going to allow you to start to see your trends. Once you have that information, then you can start to be like, okay, I'm going to double down on reels. We're doing two reels a month, one feed and one carousel. So you can start to see what works. Your audience via your insights is going to tell you what works. And then you're just going to want to keep capitalizing on that going forward. Awesome. Such great information. Jen, thank you so much for being here with us today and giving us all things Instagram.